Hi, this is Mike Ruane from Revelation Software, and this video is part two of using the AREF32 conversion wizard. If you recall, at the end of part one, the last thing that we had done was within our sample application, we had gone to the system monitor and we had run the command exec AREF32 standalone form. And when we did so, the AREF32 standalone form came up. We saw the background that looked like it was trying to become an AREF32 application, but then we got two error messages saying unable to open the VOC file or enable open dict dot file or something equivalent to that. What we're going to do is in this video is learn how to fix that problem and then continue working on our application. And the problem actually exists back in the database manager. If we take a look at all of the database files we have attached in our sample application and by going to the list of open insight tables and double click I'll get a list of all the files and subdirectories that are attached. Now in my case, on my particular copy of Open Insight, I have a null file, which I'm not really happy about, but I'm not going to clean it up for this video. I also have a subdirectory called Archive, which I'll double click on to collapse. Then you'll see that I have the one called Sample. What I'm missing here is a subdirectory called the arev underscore dir. The arev dir is where we have all the core pieces for the arev32 application, and it must be attached in order for your arev32 applications to work. Now in AREV, you didn't really need to worry about this because the AREV files were already attached as being a part of AREV. It was part of the REV boot process. But in AREV32, since what we're doing is actually creating an AREV application on top of an Open Insight application, we have to make sure that the core files needed for the AREV32 application are attached. And we have those in a subdirectory called the AREV dir. So if I go to File, I choose Add Table. You'll see we have the Add Table window here. And what I'm going to do is I could either use the full path or I could click on the browse button or I just happen to know that it's called arev underscore dir and it's directly under the Open Insight application. So I click on OK here and what I'll do is I'll get a list of all the core files that I need for my arev32 application. So I'll click on my all button here. I click on all. They all move from the currently unattached to the tables to attached. Down at the bottom of the screen, uh, which I'll try to slide down here so you guys can see it in video. I'll click on Apply. Then I'm going to get some messages saying that some of these are already attached in my sample application. I'll say yes, bring in all these new ones. Uh, I'll bring in yes, bring that one as well, taking the lists, the macros. So a lot of these core files that were duplicated when you created an application in plain old AREV. So I'll say yes through all these. And I'm happy with this. And I'll say close. And now I have all these new tables were attached. I'll slide our video pane back up top so we can see again. If I double click on our Open Insight Tables, you'll see that I have Archive here and I have AREVDIR, and then I have Sample underneath that. But now, just to make sure that I get the core pieces I need for my sample application, I'm going to reattach everything in that directory. Okay, so just to repeat, we attached the AREVDIR, which overwrote a bunch of the files that were in there, and now what I want to do is bring back my sample application in again. I'll say File, Add Table, I'm just going on a Sample, press Enter, I'll click on the All button that we have down here. I'll click on Apply. And then I start to, I'll have to slide down this pane again a little bit so you can see. I'll say yes, 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 yes. You get the idea. Once you've all been brought in, I click on Close. I will go and I will now close down the database manager. It's going to ask me do I wish to update the database image. And I'll say yes, I do. You'll see the databases get saved. So what we've done, to repeat, is that we've attached the arev dir subdirectory and then we've reattached our sample directory. So if I go to the system monitor now, which is right here, and I type in exec arev32 standalone form and I press return, hopefully my sample application will in fact open up. And now we'll see that we get our sample menu. I press return. The screens will open up. I could choose press F2 to get a pop-up of the applications there. And you see my video is slightly different than what yours might be. But again, these are some of the settings that everybody could set in their own copy of Advanced Revelation. So the core problem that people will probably have when they convert from an AREV application to AREV32 using that wizard is that that AREV dir file will not be attached. Once you've detached it yourself and you've gone forward, you're in pretty good shape. And then, once you're in, I better go back into my air of application. Once we're in here, if I press F5 and then F2 to see the TCL stack, we'll see that uh, off is the last command that I ran before. You can see that we ran the windows. And we ran something called sample. 
So if I escape out of here and I say edit voc sample, we'll see that it's just running a program called sample check, just like we had in plain old uh, sample application in ARIF32. And then once we're in ARIF32, everything should work as it does, as it did in ARIF itself. So if I take an edit space sample underscore BP, which I recall from my conversion routine, I press F2 here to look at the video, I have all different objects, and one is the soft key program. So I'll take a look at that, F9, F9, and here's the sample routine. It looks just like the one that was in ARIV. I can press the Shift F9 key to do a compilation. It compiles for me. It gives me the same happy compilation messages. It should, in fact, at this point, work exactly the same as my ARIV application did, with one core exception. First off, when I say who, we'll see in our who screen that my expanded memory is inactive. My available memory is off the charts because we don't need to worry about expanded memory with ARIF32 anymore. Nor do we need to worry about the 64K limit on files. So the, uh, the limitations that we had with quick dexes or with relational indexes, things like that, those 64K limits are now gone. And I can also do neat things inside my ARIF32 application like printing to OIPI. As I wander a little bit off the topic here, if I type in uh, run menu hardware, you'll see that it gives me a hardware menu. I'll go over to printer. And underneath my environment and my printer, I have uh, some sort of uh, printer called Canon LPB and I press F2 and I'll get a list of all the different uh, was it Control F7? If I can move that, oops, can't right use that key. So I'll scroll down until I find HP LaserJet and the name. So this used to be Port LPT1, LPT2. If I press F2 here, we have some new options. The first one, OIPI, lets your Open Insight printing. I'm sorry, let your ARIV32 printing go into an OIPI preview window. So it's like previewing inside of Open Insight. The second win default means go to the default Windows printer set up for this workstation. And then every other printer that we see in this list here are printers defined for my machine on my network. So if I go back and I choose OIPI for my HP LaserJet for printer number one, and I press the F9 key there, and it's going to ask me which one should I set for my active printer in my environment, and I'll say let's choose number one. It's chosen it. So if I escape out of here, if I go back to TCL, I just perform a simple command of list 30 voc. You see I get my preview screen on ARIV just like we're used to. However, if I say that same command, so I'll do dot one, we get list 30 voc, I do paren p, normally this would send it to the printer. But since I've defined my printer to be OIPI, it ought to, if everything's working correctly, give me a preview window in Open Insight of OIPI. And then, once I have this screen defined, and I'll scroll down my little viewer window, you'll see down here that we have options for the printer setup. Uh, do I want to do the printer setup and my exports? And once I get to here, I can thing, do things like do a PDF or an HTML version of this. At this point, when we send out stuff, send output to the printer uh, in ARIF32, we can't go to the CSV automatically. But we're working on a solution for this. So I'm going to cancel out of here, and you get a view of that, and I'll close down this preview window. And then back in ARIV32, what we'll finally do is I'll click on here, and uh, I'll just type in off to get out of here. And now we're back into the Open Insight version of the sample application. So I wandered a little bit off track there by showing you the way that you could print. That's just one of the many, many enhancements that we've made to ARIV32 so that you can bring your ARIV-based applications into Open Insight. We hope you found this video informative. We hope that it's answered any questions you may have. If there are other issues, please give us a call at 800-262-4747. That's Revelation's 800 number, and it has been for over 20 years. Or if you just want to drop us an email, send us some information, an email rather, to info at revelation.com. Thanks very much for your time.